Welcome back to Five Elements Tactical. Self-defense, home defense, prepping, and survival. Today's video is a little bit of a different type of prepper experience. So we're not prepping for hurricanes or blizzards or blackouts or wildfires or any of those crazy things. We're not prepping for Armageddon or uh, you know the end of the world as we know it. We're prepping for going to Disney. So uh, my family and I, we've had a crazy rough year. I had a cousin that passed away. We had to put our dog down. Uh, my grandfather passed away. And it's my, we didn't get to do anything for my wife and I's 10th anniversary. My uh, oldest kid is going to be 10 years old. So we're trying to make some really fun memories so that, uh, you know, kind of make up for the, the crazy ones this year. But in prepping for that, I'm getting my super tactical dad backpack ready. And uh, it's our third trip to Disney. So I know that some of the things that like we failed along the way, I, you know, the best lessons you learn are the, are the hard lessons. So uh, I'm going to take you through all the stuff that I have in my pack and kind of the system that I've somewhat kind of created. You let me know what I'm missing, what I'm doing good. If you've been there and done that and you've got any tips before we go, I'm putting it up early so you guys can put that in the comments. You know, obviously for, for anybody reading and watching that they could go through and learn some stuff too. But definitely put in your two cents as you go along. And uh, let's get after it, all right? Stay with me. Make sure you stick around to the end of this video because I've got the safety tip of all safety tips for you and your family that'll help keep you safe, not just at Disney, but anywhere you go where there's gonna be big crowds. What's up, warriors? This is Kiyoshi Dave Herman with Five Elements Tactical Training, here to share with you some warrior skills and drills that anyone can learn and everyone should know. If you're new to the channel, welcome, and thanks for stopping by. If you already follow us on social media, and that's how you find your way over to this channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the bell notification button and the little thing where it says all notifications so YouTube will let you know when the next video drops and you get all sorts of cool content from here as well. All right, so check this out. Um, anytime we're prepping for anything, whether we're getting ready for hurricane season or we're getting ready for like blizzard season or we're getting ready for like, uh, you know, whatever it is, Armageddon and all of the crazy things, there's kind of like five main categories that we kind of organize our preps in, right? So you have like your food and water, your clothing, your health and hygiene, your comfort items, and your survival gear. So of course, when I was bringing this up, my wife was like, dude, survival gear, Disney. I'm like, hold on, hold on. And I started pointing out some of the things that I had with me on some of our last trips that she's like, wow, I'm glad you thought to bring. I guess your backpack would fall under the survival gear category, but um, you need something to put all your stuff in and you're gonna be walking a lot. So the first thing that I would, I would recommend is that you get a comfortable backpack. Now, I have smaller backpacks for my kids and there's certain items that I want them to carry and I want them to get responsible, kind of like, uh, you know, hey, I'm not gonna carry all this stuff for you. I want you to learn how to start to carry your own stuff. But even for them, I wanted to make sure that I had something that was small enough, uh, big enough to carry some stuff, but small enough they could carry it, light enough that they could walk with it. And when they get tired of walking with it, I want to be able to stuff it under we have a little one, so uh, our littlest one is, is still in a stroller. Not all the time, but for this, she's gonna definitely be in a stroller. And we rent one when we get down there. And uh, we, I wanna be able to take the other bags and either lash them to the side or use carabiners, these little hook things over here and hook it to the stroller itself or underneath the stroller and uh, still not be like too weighed down or too, too heavy, too much stuff. But a backpack system, definitely something you wanna look into. This is my everyday carry bag. I use this every day, everywhere I go, it's my my man purse, it's not a purse, it's a satchel. Indiana Jones had one. But um, it's got padded straps and lots of pockets. And uh, again, like, you know, for me, it, it's, uh, it comes with me on my police job. Always has a ton of stuff in there for that. Um, if I go, I own a martial arts school and I go do martial arts training. When I go, wherever I want to go training, the bag comes with me. It's my man purse, it's my everyday carry bag. So whatever one you're gonna carry, just know you're gonna be walking a lot, a lot of miles over, depending on how many days you're gonna be there, it's gonna be a lot of hours each day. So you want something that's gonna be comfortable for you to carry, and it's gonna kind of be big enough to hold all your stuff without being like super packed. So if I had to suggest something, maybe go with a little bit of a bigger pack, so you fit all the stuff in there without having to stuff it and cram it in. One of my favorite things about this bag, this is a 511 Rush Series uh, Rush 12. So 511 Tactical is a company that makes all sorts of cool stuff. Um, the Rush Series, they make this big, a bigger one, an even bigger one. And uh, this is the smallest one, it's just a 12. And it opens up into a clamshell so you can lay it down, open it up and, and see all your stuff. It's got all sorts of cool pockets in here, um, more pockets, a lot of space. Again, it's police work. I have protein shakes, binoculars. I'm a, I am uh, do surveillance at work. I got a small first aid kit in here and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, snacks, protein bars, gum, charger. We'll get into it. All right, so as far as like 
what you need to bring with you going into the park. When it comes to clothing, the first thing you gotta really worry about is what you're gonna wear into the park, right? If you're gonna go do some water stuff, maybe you'll have your bathing suit on or you'll have a bathing suit with you, but you wanna wear comfortable clothing. It's gonna be super hot, super humid. You definitely wanna have comfortable uh, sneakers or footwear uh, with an extra pair of socks. You wanna make sure that you wanna take care of your feet. You're gonna be on them for a lot of hours. I would recommend that you practice walking before you go on your vacation. If you're going to be going to Disney or one of these other parks, you got to walk around. Start walking around your block and try to get in like up to maybe a couple of miles. Just walking, no running, nothing crazy. But make sure your, your shoes are comfortable before you go, that your socks are comfortable before you go, and you kind of break them in before you go. We're big on two is one and one is none. So, you know, like your, your feet get wet or your socks get wet. I don't bring an extra pair of sneakers, but I always have an extra pair of socks. Um, I always have baby powder with me so I could keep my feet dry when I put on my other pair of socks, slip them into my sneakers, or your feet start getting all sorts of jacked up and you want to like take off your shoes, let your feet air out and relax, and you switch to a, a pair of flip-flops or sandals or something. But again, even those, if you're going to be walking in them, they should be comfortable. I know my wife could walk for miles and miles in flip-flops, whereas I cannot. I need, I need like good, comfortable, sturdy lace-up shoes. But my, uh, my flip-flops, I have all different kinds, but the ones I bring with me are the ones that get nice cushy bottoms with uh, that air support and a bottle opener on the bottom for just in case. When it comes to clothing, a couple other things you want to bring is, especially if you're thinning on top, uh, a hat, keep the sun out of your eyes, keep the, the sun off your head. Uh, in case one five elements tactile t-shirt's not enough, I bring a second one just in case. And again, that extra pair of socks. Things that I typically have on me anyway are always going to be uh, my sunglasses, which I highly recommend. Um, my watch, you know, oh, you got to be at this place at that time, or we have reservation and meet Mickey at this time. Uh, you know, of course you can have your cell phone, but you know, I I'm big on wearing a watch as well. All right, now these two items, uh, I always have a bandana in my pocket because I sweat like crazy. Uh, but it's good for a lot of things, you know, like you come out, I hate when there's uh, no hand towels, I dry it on this, or I'll wipe my face with it, or uh, there's a million things you can use a bandana for, but I use it pretty much just like, oh my God, it's hot out. Um, but the other thing is a shemag. Now shemag is like a really thin, uh, it's a big scarf. It's like a big bandana, if you've never seen one. They're, they're really light, like uh, we use this for, again, a, a bigger, bigger bandana, so again, for sweating. Uh, my kids will use it as a blanket in the car if they're cold or the baby's falling asleep and it's good for, they, I have them in all different colors, but if I'm going to be out in the sun, uh, really hot, really humid, I go with light colors because it, it doesn't absorb as much heat and it's a little bit more uh, cool and we use it really for shade uh, over the baby, over yourself. You can put it in water and soak it. If it's really hot, put it around your neck and keep yourself cool. Uh, there's a really, a million awesome uses for a shemag. All right. And, uh. I don't know if it's survival gear or if it's clothing. I mean, I'm not going to wear it unless I have to, but it rains all the time. So uh, you have a quick, you know, rain poncho that you could throw on over yourself. We got little cheapy ones for the kids that, man, you, you use it and then it, it gets torn, it gets ripped. I got these at Home Depot for like, I don't know, maybe five bucks, four bucks, six bucks, something like that. But they're um, awesome. And for this, I'm definitely going to bring one for me and one for my wife. Easy, set it, forget it. Folds down real flat, slips right in your bag. All right, so the next category is health and hygiene. So... The first thing I, I would recommend is, again, because you're going to be in a lot of sun and a lot of heat and it's just, it, it's a lot. So your first layer before you even put on your clothes is your skin and it, it's really important to take care of that. So uh, definitely some sunblock, sun uh, sunscreen um, in the event that you wind up, you get some like uh, sunburn. I recommend some aloe or something like that. It's like just in case, you know what? You could buy all this stuff down there, but it's so expensive. So if you could go to like Walmart, your dollar store, any of those places way ahead of time, you know, you, you save yourself. Disney's going to be pleasantly expensive all by itself. If you could get this stuff ahead of time, I hate when I got to go somewhere and give them like a ton of money for something that I'm like, come on, man, you knew better than that. So protecting your skin, sunblock, and in the event that you, you didn't put on enough or you forgot to put it on or wasn't, you know, you were out too long and you got some sunburn, some uh, aloe vera, vera, however you say that. Um, I'm big on baby powder, um, also, uh, you know, deodorant, deodorant, you're going to be sweating a lot, um, Listerine is just, um, you know, I eat something, I feel like my breath smells, wash it up, rinse your mouth, spit it out. Now, Aquaphor, you could use, um, Vaseline or, um, really anything, it's, or Body Glide, that's like a thing that goes on like a deodorant, and it's just a, uh, like a, a skin lubricant, so like, walking a long time, I don't got the bot I used to, and I start like, gruh chafing in spots and I'm like oh my god getting uncomfortable give me a few minutes freshen up and I got all the stuff with me 
uh, dude wipes because I'm a dude. Um, but uh, it's they're just like uh, like almost like uh, baby wipes, but for dudes on the go. That's what they're called. And this stuff, anti monkey butt. It's a, it's another type of uh, baby powder, but it's got calamine in it. Calamine, I'm saying that right. Um, talc free sweat odor and friction fighter with calamine. It's it's really cool. Uh, at first, I thought it was a joke, and I tried it out. I'm like, I'm a big fan. The next thing is just keeping stuff clean. So like, there's like washing yourself. You know, like uh, again, I got kids. You know, they. <laughs> sneezing it's not all over them or something or you're gonna be touching a lot of stuff that's kind of gross or everybody's touched that so bring some hand sanitizer san hand sanitizer uh baby wipes you want to wash the stuff that you're going to be going here like those clorox wipes you just take one out and wipe stuff down and um you know you you'll know where and when like oh my god i wish that was clean you take one of these things out wipe it down you're about to eat put some hand sanitizer wash your face wash your mouth get yourself like ready to eat and so you're not putting germs and stuff in your mouth i don't know if they're still doing masks down there I happen to just go to the doctor today and like you need a mask. I'm like, oh my God, I feel we're still doing that. But uh, but I mean, better to have it not need it than need it and not have it. Uh, tissues, just because my kids, you know, they're kids, they get runny noses or, or whatever or stuff on themselves and they just want something soft to, to wash up with. I grab these. I always have them in my bag as well and I fill them up with the, with the big bottles we have at home. But just, you know, whatever meds, over-the-counter meds that you might need, like for Tums or... Uh, headache, upset stomach, you know, you're going to be walking a lot. The next day you're going to be crazy sore. You pop a couple of Motrin or a leave or something, and all of a sudden it's like uh, the, the oil can that got the Tin Man going in Wizard of Oz type of thing. And these, uh, I'm a police officer, and we often see these in the hospitals, and I grab them ahead of time just because um, your kid goes on some crazy roller coaster or something after they just pegged out on some bunch of junk food, and they get off, and they look like they're turning green, and they're going to go. It's a puke bag. So uh, I always have them in the car because my kids used to get car sick and I'm like, not in my car, not in my car. But uh, now they wind up in our bags and again, I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. All right, next one is food and water. Now, I don't remember what the rules are. Disney's got all sorts of crazy rules about, you know, what you can and can't bring in there with you. But um, you just tell them that you got like some sort of, you're diabetic or allergic or food. There's some word that my wife always uses. But um, you know, I'll just say, look, I need it. My kids, you know, go into shock or something if they don't eat it, and they won't ask you any questions. It has to do with your health. Now, a bottle of water in Disney, like a 16-ounce bottle of water is about like four bucks, five bucks, like thieves, thieves, thieves. Like, oh my God, whatever. But I get it, they run the business. Whereas you bring your Nalgene bottle, because again, you're gonna be walking a lot and sweating a lot. So you need to like keep yourself hydrated, right? So I'm big on um Liquid IV is another brand that I use a lot, but but this is like, it's cheap. You get them at Walmart. Um, this is raspberry lemonade flavor. That's the one I like best. Zero sugar, uh, but it's an, they're electrolyte packs. So you're really supposed to put them into it like 16 ounce of water, but it's too sweet for me. So uh, I'll fill up this at a water fountain. I rip open one of these, pour it in. Now, I don't know about you guys, but like uh, I live in New York and New York water tastes a certain way. Even after we filter it, you go somewhere else and you're like, eh, water tastes funny. It's not funny. It's down there. It's normal to them. But if your kids are very picky about that, putting some sort of, you know, even their uh, Kool-Aid packets or whatever it is, give them some sugar. They're going to be walking around and it's Disney, man. You want them to have fun. But again, bring a water bottle. You'll be able to fill it up, you know, anywhere there's a bathroom, there'll be water fountains outside. There's water fountains all over the place. You fill them up. Throw in a packet of some electrolytes because you don't just need the water, but you need to replenish so many of the things that your body uh, needs, not just in the water. So when it comes to water, highly, highly recommend. Bring a, a Nalgene bottle. My kids have the smaller one, so if I put one of these in there, um, you know, they're like, it's like fruit punch, you know. <sighs> snacks, you want to bring stuff that, uh, you know, you know what snacks you like, but you want stuff that's not going to melt. I have a couple things here that have some like kind bars. We're big on those. Cliff bars are great. My, the little one, I got a two-year-old that loves fruit snacks, uh, nuts, you know, healthy fats. Like, I eat these, and I, I don't know, they're, like, satisfying. And again, you go to the Walmart, uh, you know, whatever your place would be, BJ's, Costco, Sam's Club, any of those places. And, I'll, and you buy these, you know, especially if you're going down there, or you get down there and you go shopping once you get down there so you're not bringing the weight with you on your, on your, in your suitcase. But you get it at Walmart or the shops that are down there before you go to the parks. That way you save a ton of money. And again, you're gonna go, you're gonna buy stuff in there anyway, but to go and buy something like this in there or something like this in there, it's just insane. And again, I can't wrap my head around that. I'm giving them enough money in tickets and whatnot. So snacks, water, most important. Electrolytes, highly recommend. Pick which snacks you like. 
uh, M&Ms, they melt in your mouth, not in your hands, stuff that's not gonna melt and make a huge mess. All right, the next one up is comfort items. Now, comfort item for me is like, you know, my, my phone's going dead or something like that, wherever we go, I recommend you bring some sort of like portable charging brick or whatever. Uh, my kids have gadgets, so I got one for each of them with new cords, just to make sure everything's charged before you go, charge it in the room at night, whatever. But again, it's nothing worse than like, you want just quiet and you don't mind giving them their gadgets because they'll, they'll stay calm, they'll stay quiet. It's hot and miserable. When's mom coming back with the food? What's going on? Like here, 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 here. And they're like, gives mom, dad a chance to just take a breath. Because if their stuff's going dead, it's going to be a hassle. So for me, uh, charging pack, uh, charging brick. Another thing is if you're going to be going on water rides and stuff and you don't want your phone getting wet, you get these uh, waterproof cases. These are good for water parks and, and wherever, but uh, it's great. Your phone fits in there. You clip it closed. You've got a string and lash it around your head, your neck or uh, wherever you're going to keep it. But again, you know, uh, I, I hate to like lose my phone when you need it most when you're down there using it for pictures and all those other things. So protecting your gear these things you can get them on amazon you could probably get them in uh walmart or whatever but like worth their weight in gold and um they're super expensive if you buy them in the parks so it's a, a fan the batteries are dead on this one but you fill it with water it's a spray bottle so it gives a mister and you put the fan on and it is just like heaven when it's like 99 degrees and 99 percent humidity um real real save the day type of stuff um, other comfort items are going to be like, uh, like that shemag, that, that blanket thing that, that my kids use. That's a comfort item when the baby wants to just like chill out and want to block out the sun, give her some shade, let her like just chill, comfort item. Um, if there's certain like little toys or fidgets or things that your kids are into, pack some of those with you in case they're just like, you might be online for a long, long time waiting for a ride. And there's, if you can give them something to do. When, when I was a kid, we just waited. And if you complained too much, you got the look. If that didn't work, you got a smack in front of everybody. But um, now you give them, you got to, hey, here's a gadget. But again, pack some of those things that they're going to like that'll keep them kind of occupied while you're sitting around waiting. All right, and when it comes to survival gear, obviously we have a little first aid kit, you know, like uh, I have one. So you could buy them in the store like this, or what I do is I take the same thing, I pop it open, and I beef it up. I have a set of tweezers, Neosporin, like in ketchup packets, some gloves, ton of band-aids, some chapstick, some other stuff. I have a video, I'll put the card up here. We went through the whole thing recently. But you put in there what, what you think you get, you need. If your kid has like a, you know, where they need an EpiPen, you make sure you bring that with you. If there's any sort of like crazy allergy that they have, you want to bring this stuff for that. If they're uh, super allergic to bugs, you, you bring some bug spray and, you, and you, you make sure you keep it as comfortable and as proactive as you can. All right, you still with me? There's a different type of survival that I, I'm a firm believer in when it comes to, uh, you know, big parks, big crowded areas, whatever. Maybe it's the cop in me. Maybe it's the, the sensei or martial artist in me. I'm not sure. I'm always nervous about somebody taking my kid. I'm, I'm sure all parents are, right? So we get these bracelets. And the way these bracelets work is on the inside, um, there's these cards. And the card has uh, our, the kid's name and our information, my, and my wife's name, uh, phone number, and email address, okay? So each kid, each of my three kids, gets a bracelet, right? We put the bracelet on their dominant hand. That's just my system because I know where to look for it, right? Um, years ago, from my martial arts school, we got these temporary tattoos, right? So uh, I got way more than I needed. I have tons of them. So what I do is I take the temporary tattoo and I put it on their opposite forearm. So uh, you know, if they had long sleeves on, they use their strong hand to lift it up and show it to me. Now the reason for this is one, in the event that they got lost, their information's on them. Two, if we got separated and they had some sort of a medical emergency or they were unresponsive, it says right on there, vital ID inside. You could tell that it's got the, the red cross looking thing on there. And uh, you know, a police or security or, or EMT, paramedic, they'll know what this is. They'll open it up and they'll look in there and be able to get in contact with me or my wife. The tattoos are in the event that somebody tried to take my kid, right? Um, I'm a police officer and, and you know, we, we learn about it at work and you hear all sorts of crazy stories that crazy people out there will like put a wig on your kid or you know, dose them and drug them and then they're unconscious or they look, you know, they look like they're sleeping, they put a wig on, change their clothes, they're carrying their kid out, but they're not carrying their kid, they're carrying your kid. So, God forbid we got separated and I thought that my, my kid was lost. Obviously my, my plan is we locked the place down, so it caused a huge panic. Where's my kid? Where's my kid? Security, security. And what we do is mug shots. So when they have those things, like you gotta be this tall to go on this ride, 
We put them in front of that or next to a mailbox or a fire hydrant or a garbage pail or something that you could use for scale to see roughly how big your kid is. And we do pictures from the front, from the side, from the other side of the tattoo, of the bracelet. Um, if they have a cool hairdo, I take a picture of the hair. We get a close-up of the face. Um, if their hair's got different colors, I make sure I get that. As many details as I can, as soon as I take those pictures, I text it to myself and my wife. I email it to myself and my wife so that if my phone went dead, I could still retrieve it from me. I could borrow somebody else's phone and go into my email and be like, all right, here's the pictures of my kid. Whatever your system is, if you don't have a system, I'll put a card up here, but I got a video with the same thing, a little bit more in depth. Um, but that's part of my system and it falls onto su uh, survival gear. In my plan, in my system, the bracelets, the tattoos, and you could use any tattoos. More times than not, the bad guy's not gonna get that off in time. And don't forget the mug shots. Every time the kid gets wet, they uh, change their clothes, pictures. Um, they, their hair gets wet and it, it doesn't look the same, pictures. Uh, they get a, a tat, uh, their face painted, pictures. I need like pictures of what they look like right now. They look, they change what they look like, pictures of them right now. Too much? <laughs> I hope it's not too much. Tactical dad, I don't know what to tell you. Anyway, if I'm missing something, let me know. <laughs> Hopefully soon before we leave for this vacation. But uh, either way, put your comments down below. So anytime somebody else watches one of these videos and they read through the comments, there's always awesome stuff down there. Keep it nice, keep it polite like you always do. It's one of my favorite things about the channel. But uh, that's all I got. So if you made it this far and you like what I'm teaching or preaching, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and like this video. If you're loving it, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And if you gotta have it, make sure you hit the bell notification button and the little thing where it says all notifications so YouTube will let you know when the next video drops. If you're really digging it and you want more, you can find me on all social media platforms at 5 Elements Tactical. That's all I got for now, Warriors. So until our paths cross again, pray for the best, prepare for the rest. I'm Kiyoshi Dave Herman with 5 Elements Tactical Training. Thanks for watching.